the first time in 170 years, over 120 objects will be returning from the East Wing of Buckingham Palace to the Royal Pavilion Brighton, George IV's fantastical architectural creation. The purpose of it, it was a seaside retreat, uh, away from the constraints of his father's very conservative, rather dull court. Here, George could live a, a life unconstrained by court etiquette, and he could indulge all his fantasies here to his heart's content. It was widely felt that after Queen Victoria decided she no longer wanted to live here, the building was likely to be demolished. And so in 1847 and 1848, the building was completely stripped of its contents. About two years ago, I suppose in 2017, we were in the planning stages of the resurfacing project. And so I called up David Beavers, Keeper of the Royal Pavilion, and suggested to him that there might be a possibility of a loan should Her Majesty uh, agree to this loan request. We're very lucky in that George commissioned a watercolourist called Augustus Pugin to do a series of watercolours of the interiors of the completed building in the 1820s. They depict most of the grand rooms in minute detail, so we know exactly where things were placed. The resurfacing of the East Wing at Buckingham Palace has given us an unparalleled opportunity to take on loan about 123 objects from the Royal Collection. The two grand rooms here are the music room and the banqueting room which reflect George's interests in eating, which he never lost right till the end, um, and um, music, which was a great passion of his. There was also the central room, which was the saloon, which was a formal reception room. And these three rooms are the rooms where the most significant loans are going to take place. Frederick Crace and Robert Jones created these extraordinarily lavish interiors. They also designed furniture for these interiors. So in the banqueting room, there's a whole set of sideboard tables designed by Robert Jones in a Chinese style, a wonderful clock and barometer in a Chinese style, really lavish, wonderful things of sort of writhing serpents, all designed uh, for, for this room. So it was kind of the theatre of the table. That's what eating was about in a building like this. It wasn't just sort of gluttony, it was appreciating the taste of George, uh, his lavish expenditure, and of course that he could afford the best possible chefs. But these were really an opportunity for George to show off his taste. In the music room, uh, Frederick Crace and a team of 44 assistants painted elaborate um, mural decorations on canvas, oil on canvas, which were done from 1817 to about 1820. And uh, these are imaginary Chinese landscapes with pagodas in them. So on the walls you had pagodas in two dimensions. Uh, and in the room itself, George acquired a set of lavish porcelain pagodas in three dimensions. So the music room is intended as a room where there was a kind of interplay between two and three dimensions. The banqueting room gallery and the music room gallery were reception rooms, sitting rooms really, but, but they were also used for dancing as well, and light suppers. These were furnished in very lavish style with his collection of mounted Chinese ceramics with elaborate gilt bronze mounts combined two of George's great enthusiasms, the arts of the East and the arts of France, because the gilt bronze mounts were often French or in a very French influenced style. I have to say it has been an extremely happy collaboration between the Royal Pavilion and the Royal Collection. What has been so encouraging is the enthusiasm with which the staff at the Royal Collection have approached this loan. This is a very, very exciting project which will give visitors who haven't had the opportunity to see these wonderful pieces in Buckingham Palace, they will now be able to see them uh, in Brighton at the Royal Pavilion. I think they will be absolutely amazed by what they see, what, what today is called the wow factor. I, I, if people don't do that, I will be very disappointed. <laughs>